Epiphany Farms. I'd like to run through a, a few kind of like gardening tips and, and techniques that we use not only in the greenhouses but also during the, the growing season outdoors. So uh, we have a couple of different hoes. Most of these are coming from one of our favorite companies which is I think most people in the country have found that Johnny Select Seeds is one of the premier gardening companies in the world. And these hoes, this is a Glacier wheel hoe, and this is actually made in Switzerland. We have a wire hoe, a trapezoid. I believe this is a six inch, six inch scuffle hoe. And then we have my favorite, which is a collinear hoe. Kind of depends on which stage of growth we're at with the crop. A wire hoe and a collinear hoe are gonna be when the crop is a little bit smaller, when there's not a lot of compaction, when we just need to get in there and scuffle the surface and kill those weeds at a really, really young age, we're gonna definitely use this tool. I like this, it's so versatile. I can go with it all the way, kind of perpendicular to the crop and I get six inches of working path or I can just turn it more narrow and go down all the way to one inch working path. Um, so this way I can get in between. It's really great because you know even though the canopy of the crop is growing this little bar kind of sneaks right through it and then you'll you'll see that now these guys if you get into a situation where it's really dry or the weeds have really really established a root system you're gonna break this and this is not the ideal tool either is this smaller wheel they call this a wire hose but it really is a more of a, a metal bar there's also actual wire hose that you can get I know never sink farms has a really cool kit that they sell it has interchangeable heads so you can have one handle and then you can have all these different heads on one I, I would suggest for a gardener that's getting getting started to have that system probably the best way to go now if the weeds are more established and the, the ground is maybe very compacted and you really need to go out there things this is a trapezoid hoe and the reason why I love the trapezoid hoe is that I can actually sharpen this edge it's not gonna have action like the scuffle hoe back and forth it's gonna be more of like kind of like a, a chopping so this is gonna be a little bit more of a chopping situation but let's just say I want to get rid of something. In this case, we have a couple of plants that are a little bit thicker. If I want, I can just, just get right underneath the root, pull it out. And just like that, you know, you're going to be pulling some really big stuff out of the ground. Very, very efficient. Six and a half inches of working path. So you can do a lot. But in all honesty, over the years, I've become less reliant on this tool. And the reason is because if the if the crop and the weeds are this established, then I'm behind. And so nowadays with where we're at, with our skill level, we're not really getting to a point where we're this far behind. And then if we were this far behind and we were trying to work on a field, we do have tools that can uh, attach to the tractor. So a little bit less often are we are we using this, but um, it still is a really great tool to have. And there are times where it's absolutely essential. But anyways, the trapezoid hoe, really cool. Home garden, definitely a must but you're going to use this less and less as you become more experienced and more efficient with the, the smaller collinear hose. This is a 12 inch scuffle wheel hoe. It's a relatively simple machine. It's, it's not necessarily very cheap. It's built with really, really high quality materials. And this thing right here, it kind of like oscillates, goes forwards and backwards. And it's got a cutting edge on this 12 inch blade or stirrup hoe, and it's on both sides. So I'm gonna get action going forward and coming back. If I was gonna be resetting a garden bed, which these garden beds in this greenhouse are 40 inches wide, a lot of the industry does either a 30 inch bed top or a 40 or 42 inch bed top. Uh, these are kind of somewhere in between. They're not perfectly laid out, but in between the, the rows, the walking paths, we're gonna be using this a lot. And then we would also possibly use it just to reset a bed and to be able to sow directly into it or to plant into it. Let me, I'll demonstrate the action on this real quick. There's a couple different adjustments, a lot of different things you can do with this but at the end of the day kind of keep it about a little bit lower than chest height and you can kind of go forward and backwards but one of the really cool things about this tool is you can go pretty quick and then sometimes you can actually come in backwards and get really good action on it and in this case coming right up against that red vein spinach and just making sure that I'm disturbing the top inch of the soil. Any weed seeds that are starting to germinate are gonna be disturbed and they're gonna break and they're gonna die even before I see them growing above the surface. That's what we call the red-like stage of a weed and that's when we wanna kill it. It's most vulnerable at that point.
And so would you use this outside as well? Yeah, we, we will use this outside sometimes. Like if I just have to spot weed like a couple of um, rows, our, our garden sites in the, in the field are anywhere from 120 to 220 feet long. So doing this is very effective. It's pretty efficient for one person, but it is something that we could tool on our tractor, cultivators that would cover the tractor tires. And most of the time we're, we're gonna do this action in the field from the tractor. But sometimes you're going on in the field, maybe conditions are too wet or you're just getting started. And in that case, you would want to just kind of rely on, on the Glacier wheel hoe. There's other brands of this. This is the kind of the, the Rolls Royce of wheel hoes in a lot of ways. Um, there's different setups for it, but we usually always just fall back to the really basic 12 inch scuffle hoe or the bar. Anyways, this is the, the wheel hoe. And this is where we're going to do the walking paths and greenhouses, as well as just weeding a large area very, very quickly. The same as the Glacier wheel hoe. This is what we call a scuffle hoe or a stirrup hoe. It has a couple different names. The main thing about this is that it has this, this action and it has a, a blade on the front and on the back so that as we go through the, the bed, it, it works in both directions. So in this case, you know, I can very easily just kind of tune this in and it also works really well with a lot of compaction. So just like this, I can do it in a lot of different ways. It's gonna be a little bit more difficult for me to use this hoe in these smaller rows. And so that's why we tend to use other style heads in these smaller rows. But nonetheless, if this is your only tool, this you'd still be able to make it happen with no problem. And so we do have a lot of these. I would say that this is used the second most on our farm. And the one that's used the most is definitely this collinear hoe. And they've got a lot of different styles of this, but let me show you how it's done. So with the collinear hoe, most of the pictures of us watching field workers in the field is they're always hunched back, their thumbs are down, and they're just like chopping action. Well, with this hoe, you don't, you don't do that. And I learned about this watching videos of Elliot Coleman from Four Seasons Farm in Maine, who I think is one of the, the godfathers of organic small scale farming. And I would highly suggest watching the godfather of that to demonstrate this as well. He is an inspiration to many farmers around the world, but you're going to use your thumbs up your back is going to be straight i like to start in the middle of the bed and work my way out and you can go in between all these plants and in this case we missed a few things the last couple times we've done this and we can go in and we can get all of that out this lettuce was just cut and harvested and so now since it was cut and harvested we have a little bit more access to get after these larger grass seeds and then here we have some pigweed or some a wild amaranth a lot this is a, a bachelor button you know you don't realize it but even the vegetables that you're growing to eat if not managed well can go to seed and then they could become a weed the definition of weed is not that it's inferior or that it's bad or that it's not edible or that it's thorny the, really the definition of weed is something that is not growing in in the correct place it's all perception but in this case you know if we had a bunch of spinach inside of this lettuce then even the spinach could be a weed. It could be a benefit because it could be a companion planting and I can manage it that way. But in this case, we want to have this one clean bed of lettuce. Anything else that's in this bed that's not lettuce is considered a weed. I don't want to cover that up too much. I'm going to focus on one row and I'm using both sides of the blade to get up to really close to each one of those rows, each side of that lettuce. And so I'll do a little section real quick. Sometimes you'll kill a plant. It's not uncommon. It, depending on the type of cultivation, sometimes we'll, we'll grow and, and, and plant a little bit more just to accommodate for us to lose a few here and there when we're in the field weeding and cultivating. I'm sure your first season you lost a lot of plants probably, right? Oh man, our first season, you don't even want to know about our first <laughs> season. I always say like when I first started farming, I, I started failing. But you got to start somewhere. And, you know, when we started growing in 2009, I didn't have a lot of resources or a lot of mentors. I, I, had, a, I had to study a lot and I had to read a lot of old books and kind of seek out the farms around the country that were doing what we wanted to do. But nowadays, you know, there's a lot of online courses. There's a lot of farms that are publishing great content. There's a lot of companies that are supplying these awesome tools that you know, we're not very popular in America for a while, but they maybe stayed popular in Asia or Europe. And now they're a lot easier to get here in this market. And so this is a great time to start gardening and farming. You got a lot of resources and a lot of access to great tools and great information. Sometimes you still have to come through and, and hand hoe. I like to make sure when I'm weeding, I'm also kind of setting us up for that next harvest. So if you see any, any leaves that are maybe ripped or, or not growing correctly, pull those off. 
And then we really want to get this, these weeds not to be so established and get them out of the bed so that on harvest day, it's real clean, really efficient and easy to bring in the lettuce mix for the restaurants. Thank you.